Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today I'm going to show you exactly how to wire a relay and I'm going to teach you exactly how it works by dissecting a relay and showing you the inner workings. So what is a relay? A relay is nothing more than an electro switch that involves an electromagnet from a small current telling a big current to happen. Why would you want that? Well, if you have a small switch like this one, this is for an LED light bar, and if you use it to run all of the big amount of power through it, you know, for a large, large LED light bar, this switch can actually melt inside and cause fires and shorts. Um, hopefully that's why you fused it, so if that happens, um, you know, the damage is minimized. But why go through all that when you could just use a relay and some fuses? We'll discuss that later on. So a relay will take a small electrical signal, such as a little switch, and make something big electrical happen, like a radiator fan, or a starter, or anything that draws and demands really big current, and you have to use a much bigger gauge wire to support that electrical load. So not only am I gonna show you exactly how a relay works, I'm gonna take one apart, I'm gonna show you how to wire it, and then I'm gonna show you how to use one in a practical application. And I used my 1967 Camaro as a show model for this, but relays have never changed. They're exactly the same as they were uh, decades ago. They're exactly the same as they are on modern cars, but they're usually in like a relay box or like a big block of relays, but the concept is exactly the same. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. So first we're gonna go over why you would use a relay. Basically, in an automobile, there are two types of electric circuit, basically. There's a big draw circuit, which is what you'd use a relay for, and a little draw circuit, about five amps or so. And a little amp circuit's gonna be something like interior lighting, uh, that sort of thing. Something that doesn't require a huge amount of power. What do you do if you need something with a big amount of power, like a radiator fan, or a fuel pump, or something like that? Something that draws a lot of energy. Well, you're gonna need a relay for that, because the amount of power that's required to run something like a radiator fan is too much for a simple switch to handle. It'll overheat the circuit and eventually cause it to fail or a fire or maybe worse. So you have to use a relay and the basis of a relay is inside of here, and I'll show you this later, there is a little switch that a small electrical signal tells to actuate with an electromagnet that connects and completes a bigger circuit so it can handle much, much more power. And we're, I will go over exactly how that works. So here we have our standard relay. This is your standard four post guy. This is the one you're gonna be uh, dealing with uh, pretty much all the time, not guaranteed all the time, but it's like 80% of the time. So we have our two sides of our relay. So this is our small circuit side, the power and ground for that. So this is where the small amount of electricity signal is gonna come in to tell the big power side, that's this one, to work. Now, on this relay, there aren't two grounds. A lot of people think that this guy, 87, is a ground. It isn't, because it's a switch. It's another power. So this is where power is supplied from the car battery on 30, and it connects to another big power something, like a light bar or a starter, and that's gonna be 87. So it has uh, two powers on this side, one power here, and then a ground on this side. And these numbers are standardized for uh, automotive relays. To further illustrate my point, I have some uh, different gauge wire. We can see this wire on the right side of your screen is much bigger than the gauge on the left side of your screen. And the reason for that is the whole point of the relay. So big power can come through here and go to where you want it to go without overloading a small switch. The relay can handle much more power. So we have our small signal, and that's gonna come from a, uh, a manual switch or a thermal switch, or even inside of an ECM. That's the same thing. It's just a signal that tells the relay to activate. So that's gonna come in with small power to the relay, and then that's going to go out and ground somewhere. Where that somewhere is is gonna depend on your situation. Then you have big power coming from the battery in this wire, and that's going to go into the relay, and then when the small signal is received, the switch connects, and big power, another one of these, is going to be sent to whatever you're trying to power, like a radiator fan. So these diagrams on the side of relays are super, super handy, and they identify basically what you need to know. Now, the reason there's numbers on them is because on the bottom, you'll see there are actually numbers on them, so don't take the diagram just as face value like you could 
tilt, you know, twist it upside down and this would correspond with this one. That's not true. That's why there's numbers on there. So let's find number 30 right there. But on the relay, number 30 is actually this one here. So just pay attention to that and line the numbers up with the diagram on the switch, not its actual position on the side. So now we're going to um, complete a circuit for the low side. So we can hear the electromagnet inside click, and this will tell us that this circuit on the right side of your screen is going to be completed. So it doesn't matter which way you wire this either. I have the orange wire over here as the positive. I'm holding the negative. It doesn't matter because um, it's not like an electric motor that can be wired backward and run backward. It's just completing um, a circuit. So we can touch it. So you hear that little clicking? That's actually the electromagnet inside completing this circuit here. So what does that look like? So I've taken the cover off of this relay and you can see this coil windings here and this resistor. This resistor um, calms down electrical noise. Don't pay too much attention to that. This coil windings, the uh, basically the magic that makes it happen and it's a, you know basically an electromagnet and this is what the small electrical signal controls. This will actually cause this down here to touch and click, which we're gonna show right now. So again, I have 86 and 85 hooked up, and when I touch it, you will see right down here in that little window, you're gonna see the uh, contacts touch, and that will be telling the big electrical signal to happen. So that's the clicking noise right there. So the big, let's say, radiator fan is off. You push a button inside, or a thermo switch, or something like that, it tells the small circuit to happen, that's what I'm holding, and boom. Now the, the big radiator fans on or starter or, or whatever big electrical draw you want to have happen. That is pretty cool. So on failure rates with these, uh, what basically happens is either the coil windings in here short out and stop functioning or the contact points here that were actuating earlier they get dirty or corroded in there and they stop making contact when the relay actuates. So we can see our relay that we've been working with the whole time is now wired up exactly the way you would wire it in a car with uh, power on this side. So this is a big feed power from the battery and this is a small you know, feed power from uh, you know, a switch or something like that. And then on this side, we can see that the big power line, big power line is going over to here to our light bulb, which is a stand-in for something like a radiator fan or a starter or something that requires big draw. And then that uh, just has a ground that goes back uh, to the either body or the battery. So we can see that the three out of the four prongs are occupied, wired up correctly. So when we touch number 86 with the uh, ground from our battery completing the circuit, our big power happens. So imagine that light bulb as a radiator fan or something like that. And we can take it off. We can hear the uh, electromagnet in the relay deactivate and activate. So this is exactly how a relay works and exactly how you're going to wire it in a practical application. So now check this out. Our whole relay system is hooked up without me having to um, control the ground and our light is still not lit up. Why? Well, that's because we put a switch that interrupts the signal on the low side on the positive side of the relay. Typically, you want to do it on the positive side uh, if you can. Also, when it comes to fusing on the small side, the small circuit, you want about 5 amps, and then on the big side, about 30 amps. Because you need to fuse these, I haven't put fuses in them just for uh, simplicity, but it's pretty easy to add a fuse in. So, let's test it out. This is a regular switch. You can see that it is marketed for a, you know, like a high-end light bar that draws a ton of power. So just imagine that as a high-end light bar and check it out. The light lights up and then the signal is interrupted and the relay uh, opens, which separates this connection and turns off. Now this switch can be a lot of different things. It can be a manual switch like this one. It can be a thermal switch that operates uh, using heat inside of like a radiator or an intake manifold or something like that. Uh, in the water jacket so you can you know control a radiator fan when it comes to temperature it's kind of an older school way to do it the way they do it now is with the uh, inside of the computer and that computer um, basically inside of it uh, has one of these in there that does this you know but on a micro switch level so here we have the relay we're actually going to be using today in this application it happens to be a radiator fan and you might notice it actually has five uh, blades on it or five connections and that's okay 
because you can treat it just the same as a four blade like I showed you earlier and it'll work exactly the same. Sometimes when the power is switched on, you want this circuit from 30 to 37A to break. So that way you know that something big power is being drawn or something's on. That's uh, a reason why they make these five blades. But you can just treat it like a four blade and pretend that 87A isn't even there and it'll work exactly the same as the previous relay we showed. So I got this pigtail, pretty cool, from an electronic shop down the road. Uh, it's just a Bosch style uh, relay pigtail. They can connect, they only connect one way into relays, which makes them really, really cool. And it gives you this nice long pigtail to work with. Alternatively, you could just use blade connectors like we used previously and they go on just like that. You put on a little bit more and uh, you can wire it exactly the same way. I like this pigtail option because it's uh, quite a bit cleaner looking and uh, just ends up being a nicer install. Perfect. Very cool. So it'll come off a relay, relay like that and I've already noted which blade goes where. See, even the middle blade, we took the pin out for that. It used to be a red wire here. I just removed that, no big deal. Just pretend like it's not there, just like we're doing. So I wrote down where, which wire is going to where. So you can see here in our number 30, just like before, but on this instance, it, the color of the wire is blue. We know that's gonna be big power in. So that's gonna be anywhere that there's big power, uh, like you could use the back, uh, back the alternator. Uh, you could use the starter lug, you could use the battery. We're going to be using the starter here today in this application, so that's where that is going to be going. And closest to the amount of power we can, again, we're going to be using the starter lug in this application, we're going to mount this. And this is just a nice inline fuse with a 30 amp fuse in there, and that's going to hook to our starter lug like this, go into this crimp connector, alternatively you could solder it, and that's going to basically go into here except it's going to be much longer that's why i haven't connected these yet and that is going to be big power handled uh, for the relay yellow is number 87 or big power out you know to the device the device today is our radiator fan and that's going to be this guy here pretty self-explanatory black is small power ground so this is where the signal ground is going to be and we'll show you exactly how to what to do with that and then white is our small power or signal, which in this case, we're just going to use the uh, fan wire that came with our kit. It basically just comes on when the ignition comes on, but I don't want to use that for power any longer because I don't want that to warm anything up or cause a failure uh, somewhere I can't see uh, very easily. So we're gonna be using this as just a signal. So that is how that is going to be wired. So here we are underneath my 1967 Camaro. This is what we're going to be showing you uh, practically how we're going to use our relay today. We're underneath the car. Here is the oil pan, uh, the K part of the K member, the lower control arm, uh, steering rack, and the exhaust header. This is the rear of the uh, starter so you can see exactly where we're working with today. So you can see there's four things connected to our main power lug. I know it kind of looks like there's only three, but there's a fourth one back there. There's the big, really big one gauge wire that's actually running from our battery in the trunk to the main power lug, uh, our alternator charging line, the main power for the car, which I think is that one, and then this one right here is the one we're going to be using for the main feed for our fan relay. And again, you can get this power from anywhere there's big power, uh, like the ignition switch or the back of the alternator. Um, but we like it right here, or even off the battery, but we like it right here because it's going to be a lot tidier and we can get our fuse right here as close as possible to it. You'll see that it's only about four to five inches worth of wiring and then we have that 30 amp fuse again. Don't worry, I'm going to zip tie this, you know, away from the header. Don't concern yourself with that. And then it runs to this connector here, this crimp connector, and you see the wire changes from this bright red to a little bit deeper red. And then we are routing that all the way up to where our uh, fan is and we're gonna uh, route that wire to be a little more clean looking and make sure it doesn't touch anything. So our starter, where we just were, is right down there underneath the header, and then we routed our darker red wire to around back. Pretty challenging to see, but all you need to know is right where those fresh zip ties are that I haven't cut the tails off of yet, that red wire, that's our main power wire coming off of the uh, main power post off of the starter coming up and joining our wiring harness and coming down we can see that that red wire is the same one off the power post and that goes into our relay which we have mounted so you can see we have our relay permanently mounted here on our core support so here we have our big power that's our blue wire and it goes into our relay and feeds the yellow wire 
which feeds our fan. So the, this fan's wired a little weird. The yellow wire uh, goes into the black. The black's not a ground. That's actually the, you know, that should be the positive. And the ground's actually blue. I'm not sure why it's wired that way, but it is. So the blue goes to our ground, which is right here on the radiator, which is on our core support. And then our ground for our relay is also, you can put it to the same ground. That does not matter. And then our white wire, just like on our diagram, is our trigger wire. That's our small signal, and that goes right to our wiring harness. And this is actually the power feed that originally supplied the fan, but I didn't like that. You know, I didn't want that heating anything up and maybe frying something I couldn't quite see, so that's why we put on this really cool relay. And it has a nice fuse on it as well. Now we can do the exciting part and test it. When we put the key into the ignition position, the fan should turn on. When that happens, we know we've wired the relay correctly. The fan turns on, we know our job done right. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you've learned how a relay works, how to wire one, and how to put one in for a radiator fan or anything big electrical you want to have happen. All applicable links are located down below in the description. I hope I've earned a like from you here on YouTube today and maybe even a subscription. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.